Welcome to Section 3, Analyzing Data. In the previous section, we looked at how you could upload data into ArcGIS Online, as well as different types of data you can upload, whether it be uh, shape files or a GeoJSON file in the case of what we did. And we also looked at how easy it was to be able to create a hosted feature service from the data that we upload. That way we can go ahead and work with it inside of our web maps. And then we went a step further and we looked at how we can add extra value to that data by using the geo enrichment tools available to us inside of the ArcGIS Online platform. And we looked at some of the options available when using those tools. And then we took a step back from the map viewer that we've been using to do all of our work. And that way we can take a look at the scene viewer. And the scene viewer is a tool that we could use to be able to visualize our data inside of a 3D environment. So we looked at what scenes are, how we could create slides that are very um, similar to bookmarks that we used for web maps. And we also showed how we could adjust the environment variables to add shadows to our scenes to make them pop a bit more. In this section, we're going to take a look at the analysis tools we have available, some of the options that are there. Uh, we're not going to go over all of them. But we're going to cover a couple of the basic ones uh, to give you an idea how to work with them and also how you can living Atlas layers with those tools. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at smart mapping. We've looked a little bit very briefly at smart mapping just to kind of, you know, do a you know, one attribute field and visualize that in the map so it changes some colors and sizing for us. We're going to take a, a bit more of a dive into that tool set to see how we can create some really neat visualizations. So in this video, like I said, we'll be looking at the analysis tools a bit further. We are going to look at how you can use the Living Atlas layers that are available in the platform with your analysis tools so you don't have to uh, go out and try to find more data to upload to do some more analysis with the data that you already have. It's a pretty great way to be able to uh, run analysis in the platform. We'll also look at uh, how you can buffer features. And we'll, we'll look at real quick if some pretty basic, simple buffering, such as you know, buffer my point by 100 feet or so. Uh, but then we're going to look at a couple of different options for doing the buffering as well, as well as uh, analysis to do some aggregation to take uh, you know, more data than maybe you want to display on the map and kind of simplify that a bit. OK, so in my map here, I've got a bunch of these points that uh, I've used before. And I've already run a geo enrichment on them to add a field in here for, I think it's growth of some sort. Let me double check it. Uh, yeah, population growth for 2015 to 2020, the growth rate, expected growth rate that will be happening. Uh, for each of these uh, data points. These are just requests that have some mock data that I used for a previous book. So I'm going to use these for analysis since I have quite a few of them here, well, at least more than I do for the breweries that we've been working with. Let's go ahead and review what some of the analysis tools are available to us inside the map viewer. You can do that by clicking on the analysis button here. And we have all these different type of analysis tools. And some of these we looked at before. Uh, we have how to summarize data, and if we click on the little information icon here, it'll uh, give you a paragraph of some sort to just a little rundown on what each of these tools do, as well as you can go a little further here and you get more details about what each particular tool itself does. So if you want to get some more information about what these particular analysis tools do, that's a great way to do it. Just click on those. Uh, we have summarize, we have find locations, which is always pretty interesting. If you work with water, wastewater at all, creating watersheds and doing tracing is a very powerful way to do analysis that you can do in the platform. Uh, these are always pretty useful in those industries. Data enrichment we've looked at, so I won't cover those. Analyze patterns is always pretty interesting. You can do interpolation of points based on some fields, calculate density, you can find hot spots. That's all really interesting. Proximity. So buffers, drive time analysis, plan routes. So if you are a company that's got fleet vehicles uh, that are on the road every day and you want to plan out some routes, you can do that as well. Manage data. So this is basically just dissolving. If you have a bunch of different boundaries and you want to dissolve them all together into single boundaries, you can do that here. You can actually extract data out into like a CSV file or something in here as well. Overlay layers is always pretty great. And again, click on the information button get a little summary of what these particular analysis tools do. So we talked about buffers uh, 
to do some stuff pretty simply. And I'm just going to go down here and get a little small subset. I don't want to do a whole lot of buffers. But let's click on the Create Buffers tool. And let's say I want to create a, let's say a half mile buffer around each of these points currently in my map view. So I can actually create multiple buffers. I can create like a half mile buffer, a one mile buffer, and then like maybe a 10 mile buffer around each of these points. Those are all pretty interesting in particular use cases, maybe for regulatory purposes. A, um, you know, if you're a restaurant and you uh, need to do these buffer analysis to find out where the grease that comes out, the smokestack or something, I don't know. Uh, but I know uh, some other regulatory agencies have these requirements that facilities cannot be within like a five mile distance of maybe a school or something like that. So you need to put these kind of things up and run these buffer analysis. So they're pretty basic, straight line buffer analysis, nothing uh, too out of the ordinary. Again, we'll see how many credits this is going to use. Clicking on show credits. So it's going to use minute amount of credits to do this. I'm running it on based on the map extent. Let's run this analysis here. Give that a second to run and we'll check the results when it's done. Okay, so here we go. We've got our half mile buffers around these particular points here. And that's pretty interesting. You know, it doesn't tell me too much of a story there, but it's a, a nice way you can do the buffer. We can always do the buffers to based on uh, walk time, so or drive time. So if we look at where was that proximity and create drive time areas, um, this is the same way we did our geo enrichment for our breweries earlier. Click that, uh, and what we did in that case is that we actually did a walking time of like 10 minutes around uh, some breweries, and it's, but in that case instead of returning the buffered analysis which would be like this weird looking polygon we actually just put the data into a point which is uh, works out pretty well for us to be able to work with that data uh, later on it's a lot easier to work with points in that case and these weird looking polygons we would normally get so let's go ahead and skip out of that one and let's actually come back to our content here and let's remove these buffers real quick let's zoom back out here now, when you're doing your analysis, a lot of times you're going to want to do stuff based on, if you're working with points, you might want to aggregate these points somehow. But how would you do that? I mean, I don't, am I going to do it by city? Am I going to do it by county? Maybe I want to do it by census tract or uh, census blocks. Well, okay, do I need to go out now and find a census tract to upload into ArcGIS Online? Do I need to search for one um, so I can use it? I mean, how am I going to go about doing something like that? You don't need to worry too much about that if you want to run your analysis this way. So let's look at something like uh, aggregate points. So I'm going to aggregate these points, my rich request, and I'm going to choose a layer for aggregation. Now when I go choose a layer, the first option I have, if I don't have an existing polygon layer in my current map, is going to let me choose from living atlas layers. Okay, interesting. So there's a lot of different data available inside the Living Atlas layers. We have these different types of hex bins that we can use. I'm not going to use the hex bin in this case. It's too small of a study area to really um, take advantage of a hex bin. But maybe if I was working on the regional level, something like the West Coast or the entire United States, I might be interested in using these hex bins to run my analysis. But in my case, maybe I just want a census tracks. Okay, so here we go. We got census tracts here. We've got uh, block groups, which are too small in our case. Uh, let's go ahead and stick with the 2015 census tracts. So I'm going to run my analysis there. Notice it did not add anything to the map. I don't want to keep areas with no points. I just want the ones that do have uh, the points intersect with. And let's get some statistics going in here. I'm going to go with my growth rate. And let's go with the average growth rate, okay? I don't need to worry about a field to group by. We could do that as well if we wanted to. And I'm just going to say here, aggregated, instead of saying enriched, let's go with growth rate. And see how many credits it's going to be using. Okay, that's less than three credits to run this. 
Now let's go ahead and run this analysis. And when it's done, let's see what our results are going to look like. Okay, we got our results back. It's a lot, of, a lot of different stuff going on here. So let's go ahead and turn off the original request. Let's look at the data we got here. That's pretty interesting. So by default, not only did it add these census tracts in, which are these large polygons here, I have these points. But I've only got the one layer. Well, that's interesting. What exactly is happening here? Uh, what happened here is that the uh, tool set in here, the smart mapping tools, kicked in when it uh, ran my analysis and added the data to my map to be able to show me this in a more meaningful way. Because if it just showed me the, uh, the census tracts that the, my data was assigned to, then I wouldn't really know what's happening here. So it did a little bit of a size-based analysis using points. Now, if I click on each of these census tracts, I can see the average growth rate here is 0.79. If I go into the, the mountains, and this is the San Gabriel Mountains, where there should be no growth rate and uh, no population up in this particular census tract at all. Well, there might be some. I, I shouldn't say none. Uh, who knows? Uh, there might be a couple down over here. But yeah, there's zero growth rate happening here. All right, so I've come over this San Gabriel Mountains to this location. Again, we've got zero growth rate happening there. And again, we come down here, though. And let's look at the uh, this area. You know, we've got some growth rate happening there at 22%. Zoom a little more. So we see we got quite a bit of growth rate happening along here. That's a very large one. And minor growth rate happening in some of these census tracts down over here. And these are based on uh, points that were collected uh, randomly. Um, so it's not much of a meaningful analysis in that sense. But it was a, a good enough amount of data points to kind of work with here in this case. So you can see how we're able to go ahead and leverage the living atlas layers that are available to us in the ArcGIS Online platform to run our analysis. So, okay, that was great. And that was a great way to run that analysis. Let's go ahead and turn that off, turn back on our original request. And let's look at something a little more interesting here, maybe, than just uh, running some aggregation of data set, which was great. And that's a great way to do the analysis. But let's do some interpolation of the data. Analyze patterns. So interpolate points. We click on the little information icon here. It's going to tell us exactly what interpolate points is going to do. It's essentially going to return areas uh, classified by the predicted values. So it's going to look at a uh, my data. It's going to look at the points I have. And it's going to try and create these kind of contoured areas. Now, the example it's giving here is for uh, rainfall levels or watershed-based um, types of analysis. And I'm going to go ahead and run it on my particular tool set. You can actually run these interpolations on various types of data. It doesn't have to be water-based, like I was saying, watershed-based. So let's go ahead and pick a field. I'm going to run it on my growth rate population field. And you could do this one of two ways. You can actually optimize the analysis to go for speed. It'll be less accurate when it runs, or accuracy. And it could take a little bit longer to run when you put this high. For this amount of data points I've got on my map, I don't know exactly how accurate it will be uh, anyway. And usually you run this on a lot of different data points, but we'll just run on these for now. And we'll run it, we'll call it uh, interpolation uh, request prediction. All right, so, and you'll see, let's see how many credits I'm going to use. I'm going to use 0.2 credits. You'll see what it, what it means by prediction uh, later on, because it's going to kind of interpolate uh, between points what the values will be. And we'll see that in a second, uh, as soon as this analysis is finished running. All right, so our analysis is completed. Let me go ahead and let's move the points on top of the uh, interpolator request. And let's see what this looks like um, just by itself. So this is pretty interesting. Awesome. So in this video, we looked at the various analysis tools that we have available to us inside the ArcGIS Online platform. We looked at some basic things as how to, uh, such as how to buffer points um, by, you know, we used a few hundred feet 
that's a real simple way to do buffer analysis and that's uh, could be useful in a lot of different applications and then we also looked at how we could leverage our living atlas layers available on the platform so that we don't have to go out and try to find something like census data or census blocks or uh, you know some other large data sets or, or polygons that someone else may have created we can just use the living atlas layers already available to us to help us run some of our analysis tools. In our case, we were able to aggregate points based on census tracts that we found inside the Living Atlas layers. So it's a really powerful tool that we could use uh, in a lot of different ways in the platform. 